Good. And Adrian, do you have anything you want to add? Well, I just, again, want to thank everybody uh, for being here for the 14 weeks. We've had a consistent sort of 40 to 50 people here every week, which means that uh, your team members really uh, deserve a round of, of applause for showing up every week and participating in the work. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with Kaskaskia College Group. That's been fantastic. And each of the Benton or Illini Science Policy Fellows or the Illinois Extension people have been assigned to various groups. And I have heard from all of them that they've had a great experience sitting in with you. Um, I don't know, we asked uh, the Heartland Forward people to be on today and don't know whether they've made it. Uh, but um, I also know that Matt is here today and perhaps might want to say something, but uh, I always want to give a shout out to our supporter for this program, Heartland Forward, and of course to our two partners, the Illinois Office of Broadband and Illinois Extension. Matt, you want to say something? Sure. Thanks so much, Adrian, and, and again, everybody for joining in this program. The Accelerate program is, is so important to the mission of the Office of Broadband, and we're just thrilled to have partnered with Benton and, and Bill and Heartland Forward and others for making this a success. Can't wait to hear what you have to share today and can't wait to see you continue the momentum moving forward. So thanks again for everybody leaning in as you have. Good, thank you, Matt. The, um, well, great. Uh, if, can, I say one, today, can I say one other thing, Bill? Yes. I'm sorry. What I really okay. should be doing is thanking Bill. So please, everybody, uh, put your hands together and and uh, and give a round of applause. This is uh, Bill's uh, final cohort in the state of Illinois. We continue to work with him in Ohio and in Arkansas and coming up in Tennessee. But I want to point out that Robbie Macbeth who is a Benton staffer uh, is going to lead the next cohort um, that the uh, Office of Illinois will announce for I hope uh, early fall. But I just again wanted to give a huge big thank you to Bill. I've learned so much from him uh, sitting in on all these meetings. And uh, yes, thank you everybody for putting your uh, kudos in the chat. I know he'll appreciate it. Okay, Bill, now go ahead. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. So we're going to uh, ask you after today's session to make sure that you uh, forward your uh, slides to me. And so we have an archive of those. And um, if ever you decide that you're updating your presentation, you want to update that with us, we're happy to have your most recent version. I have three or four versions for several communities in our Accelerate program, because we know this is a dynamic process. But with that, we're just going to go alphabetically today. So that means Bond County is up first. So uh, welcome, Bond. Hi, Bill. Thank you. Do you want to move the owl closer to the closer to me? So, yeah, who uh, Bill's probably putting up the PowerPoint. Yes, Bill. I'm working on it. Oh, okay. We're just waiting for Bond. There we go. Great. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to go the right this way. Can you all see it okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So this is the one we're seeing off of? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yep, I apologize. All right, I think we're ready to go. <laughs> That's all right. all right. And go ahead and go up to display settings and uh, swap the presenter view, and then we'll see the whole slide. Oh, where do I see that? It's up at the left hand next to show taskbar. It's display settings. Okay. Swap presenter view. Yep, there you go. And we should see that first. Perfect. We see that cover slide. You can work on that then. Okay, cool. All right. All right. So uh, my name is Jacob Rail. I'm with the uh, Bond County Broadband Committee. 
Over a year ago, we formed the committee when we realized that through COVID and everything else that had happened, that our broadband infrastructure really was not up to par with what we needed. And the strain of uh, parents working from home and children trying to learn from home all at the same time really showed that, that we needed to try and come together and do something. So we have many members of the community from different backgrounds and different experiences that really did uh, help provide us um, with unique perspectives so that we could push forward on this project. And uh, during that time, we've come up with a vision and a mission statement. Our vision is universal access to reliable and effective high-speed broadband services to all residents, businesses, and visitors to Bond County with a vision for continued future growth. Our mission is to provide the highest level of broadband internet service countywide with a focus on achieving digital equity for currently unserved and underserved populations in both communities and remote rural areas of the county. So uh, for current anticipated internet standards, currently the federal and state government suggest a minimum of 25 download by three upload megabytes per second. Um, but by 2025, that standard will be 100 by 20. All current projects are encouraged to plan for that 100 by 20 and beyond. Currently, only 5% of the county actually meets the 100 by 20 megabyte standard. Uh, these are just some comments if you want to look over them that we received from our survey from different residents that really show uh, why we need some better internet in our community. And here is uh, out of the data we collected, we found that over 60% of residents in the county were on cellular or DSL service only, with 5% uh, reporting that they were able to achieve that 100 by 20 megabyte capable uh, standard. Uh, only 1% of those residents actually had access to fiber. Uh, when we were looking, these are just some of the key findings that we had, including the 40% of rural homes were on cellular, 23% were on DSL, uh, and 17% of our homes were on fixed wireless. Um, but many people had made comments that uh, with that service, it either was constantly in and out, it wasn't reliable, no longer available uh, to their residences. Uh, this is just some more info. We had 10% of our residents uh, were on satellite internet. Um, and then once again, the 5% having access to that 100 by 20. So why does this matter? Well, uh, when you look at some of the comments here that we received, we found that uh, to residents, there are many opportunities that they're missing out on, whether it's related to telehealth, being able to zoom in for uh, meetings regarding healthcare, uh, whether it was remote learning uh, due to COVID or attending college courses online, uh, precision ag, the opportunities to our farmers, uh, the business opportunities, uh, that high-speed internet could really benefit our local businesses or help bring some in. As well, uh, it's really a big benefit to those who want to work from home, uh, whether it's residents here who are able to find a better job working from home or people who move into the county uh, from a city that is able to work from home. Uh, when we look here, uh, we see that this is the current map showing fixed wireless in Bond County. Uh, while it looks like a good percentage of the county is covered, we did find looking into it that many of these places, uh, there's not actually, uh, they're not actually covered or in some places the coverage doesn't go as far as the map shows. So uh, these are just some results from our uh, fixed wireless. Uh, only 13% of residents on fixed wireless actually reported meeting the current minimum standard of uh, 25 megabyte download speeds. 68% uh, reported speeds less than 10 megabyte as well. Uh, these are the results from our broadband speed tests from the survey. Um, so did they report 25 by three megabyte uh, download and upload speed? Uh, a majority of residents said no, and a very, very small amount said yes. And if you look at the map, uh, if you can see any of the green check marks, a vast majority of them are actually in the county seat. When you go out to the rural parts of the county, uh, it was very sporadic if anyone was able to, to meet those standards. So survey question, are you happy with your internet? Uh, a majority of residents either responded with, uh, count me in, anything is better than what I have now, or sign me up, but only if it's super fast fiber. Uh, only a very few amount of residents uh, said they were happy with what they have now, and generally that was in a very small section of the county that did have access to fiber. 
So if we look here, this is a map kind of showing uh, the purple is uh, the area in the county that is currently served by DSL, whether it's AT&T, UVerse, or Frontier. Um, but that service is it's kind of an aging infrastructure starting to, to deteriorate and fall apart. And even then, it is still just very limited parts of the county that has access to those kinds of services. Uh, this is a map kind of showing the fiber and uh, cable providers going through the county. If you see that red dot kind of right in the center, uh, that's Greenville, our county seat. They have access to cable. And there is a very small section on the west side of the county where there are some uh, uh, orange dots. Those are residents who have access to fiber, but it is just very small pockets amount of people. So we, we are really missing out on that infrastructure. Kind of zooming out and uh, looking at Southern Illinois as a whole, you can see that there's uh, many areas that are either covered by cable or fiber uh, across Southern Illinois. Uh, when, lo when looking at it, it kind of appears that a lo lot of that follows down the interstates. Uh, well, with Bond County right there in the center, you can see that we just have that tiny dot there of uh, cable, but Interstate 70 runs right through the county. So we are perfectly positioned, I believe, for the expansion of high-speed internet, but we have yet to take advantage of that, and that's one of the goals that we're trying to do here. So our priority strategy overview. Uh, our priority number one is building a middle mile. Priority number two is public access locations. Priority number three is serving the underserved and unserved areas. And priority number four is competitive market, uh, is making a competitive market to achieve affordability. So for, uh, for number one with the Bond County Middle Mile infrastructure, our goal is to connect all nine township facilities in our county and the three public schools with a gigabit plus capable network. The middle mile infrastructure will serve as a countywide digital highway to all townships within our community. Internet service providers can then use the middle mile fiber as a starting point for service to homes and businesses. Our priority number two, we want to, uh, within those areas, provide public access high-speed fiber internet at key locations throughout the county. Uh, we will provide the uh, townships with the option to potentially be able to provide hotspots themselves. Uh, we want residents to only have to travel five miles or less to access a location. This is just uh, a medium step while we develop better internet to residents' homes, and it should be fairly quick after the middle mile network is completed. If you look at this map here, uh, we're talking about the underserved and unserved areas of the county. The light pink uh, portion or the light purple portion is um, residents who are currently unserved, and the dark purple is areas that are underserved areas. So if you see, combining both of them, a vast majority of the county is either unserved or underserved. There's some residents here. The, uh, we have comments that we collected from some of our residents that kind of talk about uh, why they have to travel to use internet. And it kind of pushes that idea of why we need those public hotspots and our goal of having five miles or less. Priority number four is the affordable internet. Uh, we need affordable options for all driven by healthy competition between a variety of companies providing effective and reliable service. With this in mind, we have interviewed a number of potential internet service providers. Our goal with uh, making our, our middle mile there is that we have that competition so that potentially uh, providers will be forced to be, uh, um, be able to provide more reliable service and also competitive prices for residents. This is just an overview of different providers within the county, whether they are fixed wireless or fiber. Um, and if you wanna take a moment, if you wanna look over them or later, if you wanna look at this slide to see what we have collected, but I'm not gonna read all that out. That's just what, uh, some basic information we collected on. Here, uh, this is just some more comments that we collected from our survey results, kind of talking about how expensive internet is in our area. Uh, and once again, kind of one of those uh, reasons for why we need to have affordable options. Uh, that top comment talking about $200 a month for unlimited cellular-based internet. For many families, that's just not affordable. So for funding opportunities, uh, we kind of look at some of our local options here. Our American Rescue Plan funds or ARPA funds, we have some set aside that we can use to match uh, for other funds or grant opportunities. There are local funding options, uh, as well as internet service providers will also provide, uh, potentially provide matching funding for these projects. Uh, through the state, there's the Connect Illinois grant, 
And uh, through the federal options, there's the NTIA Department of Commerce grants, the USDA grants, and the EDA grants. So if we look here, we, we just have more comments about residents who are pushing uh, to try and bring better internet within the county. Uh, people are saying that they desperately need it uh, and that it's been many years since we've had any kind of upgrade to our systems whatsoever. So what are our next steps? Well, uh, to start, we need to continue to narrow the potential uh, middle mile partners down to just a couple people. We've talked to many and uh, we're still talking with many. And uh, as those discussions go on, we really do need to, to start finding that person that we do want to work with for the rest of this project. As well, we need to continue discussions with our internet service providers to get service to the homes on those middle mile networks. We already have some people potentially interested, but we also want to expand that. As well, we're considering potential consulting firms to strengthen our grant app applications. We've already talked to a few. We've already gotten a couple, uh, uh, was it bids? We already got a couple bids on that. Um, and as well, uh, then we need to focus on writing our grant applications. So what do we need from you, the community? We need you to help us organize and mobilize your community members. We can't do it alone. The more local we get and the more that you can help contribute, the more likely we are to get this project accomplished. Uh, we need to consider private partnerships for funding. Uh, we can't do this alone either. Even with the grant money and everything else, uh, there's a lot out there um, that, that we need help with. It's a very expensive process. As well, we need help allocating the resources to get this done. And we need to help educate the community on realistic timeframes. This isn't a project that's gonna be done tomorrow or maybe even six months from now. This is a project that is gonna to continue to expand in the future. And we want everyone to know that while it might not be done tomorrow, we are continuing to work on this. And I won't read this one to you, but this was probably the favorite comment of most members of the committee from our survey results. And we will leave it to you as a final word from our community on the current situation of broadband in Bond County. <laughs> Adrian likes it. Oh my God, that is fantastic. <laughs> Thank you all. And a great ending. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Uh, thanks, Bond County. I think that plan is, uh, uh, I liked your presentation. I think it is a uh, uh, very clear. I think your use of the maps, I think, was really good. I think that showed uh, the variety of circumstances and, and without having to get too technical. And so on really gave people a great understanding of what's going on in Bond County. And then I think your plan is also very logical as well. That uh, after uh, hearing this, that many most people could actually say what your plan is, which I think is important because we want getting public opinion on your side for them to have an understandable version of something they can keep in their brains and talk about is super important. So very nice job. Thank you. And thank you, Bill. Thank you. Thank you. Any, Adrienne, any other comments? I love the quote spread throughout. I mean, honestly, it is, uh, I think, just compelling that you have captured uh, sort of what is being experienced on the ground, and it tells a very compelling story. And I also really love your steps. So your four steps initially, and then how you broke down next steps and what you need, because you're again asking people to continue to be involved and to be patient, which I think is a really good message as you take this presentation into your community. A nice mix of uh, can do, but also, um, you know, sort of this idea that this is a process that may take a while, but congratulations. Great job. Thank you. Good. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Bert, uh, Adrian. Good. Uh, next up is uh, Kankakee County. Dell. Uh, we're actually going to let uh, Ben uh, do the pre presenting on this, so I'll turn it over okay. to Ben Wilson. Good. Right, thank you. So, yeah, I figure we should uh, talk a little bit. Uh, um, during is everybody, everybody hear me? Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I guess we, we kind of have a two parts to our group. We have a, a sub kind of community group within our group and they'll be presenting in a little bit. But 
kind of talking about putting a, a bigger umbrella around our project and, and really for us stepping back, I feel like a lot of the things, and, and fortunately for us, our group has two elected officials on it from our board and an elected official from one of our communities on it. Um, so we, we get good feedback from our elected officials, but I feel like as we talk about going through the, the, the planning process and kind of finalizing these steps and going into what Bill was referring to the next 14 months or frankly 14 years uh, of broadband, you know, how do you how do you get the consensus you need from the community? And, and we gather a lot of information through the survey process and talking with our, our, our ISPs, but also then how do you translate that into a, a package that can be purchased um, with um, support from government or, or support from potential granting agencies? And so we've got a little bit of, uh, you know, info to move forward on. So my slides, I feel like when I put this this together, they're a little tight. So again, we'll be sharing this, uh, but our, our team consists of members from, you know, direct service providers, community members, elected officials, people representing economic development workforce. Uh, and we feel like we have a, a pretty good mix. We had a maybe a little bit lacking in, in education, but we had a little bit of crossover in one of the groups and maybe a little bit lacking in healthcare from a provider side, but we did get a good bit of feedback on that telehealth need from a, a user standpoint. Um, I, I was very specific in choosing our comments and, and we, didn't, we didn't really have any crazy funny comments. I'm a little disappointed now, um, but th this entire presentation is sometimes about perspective. And I talked just a little bit about this when we rolled through it earlier this week, but I, I feel like sometimes when we talk about access um, to broadband internet, it's not necessarily what I perceive as a, as a government employee as access. It could be how much somebody's willing to pay for it, what they're willing to pay for that level of reliability or that level of service. And I feel like when you start to look at our survey results, we're starting to see something where I would equate it to, because part of what I do here is transportation, people saying they waited 20 minutes for a train. And they waited two minutes, but it felt like 20. Uh, if your internet's slow and you're just, you know, surfing the internet, that's fine. But if you have a meeting or your children are trying to learn something or you're trying to have a telehealth visit and your internet glitches or you lose it, it's a, it's a greater priority. So I feel like there's a perception of internet value and it does kind of show through in the way our surveys uh, come across. So for our needs, uh, you know, as a community, we didn't really do a, a combined needs assessment from a, a government standpoint. Um, I did pull some information out of our, our application for, uh, for the Accelerate program. Uh, and, and this you'll see our needs kind of rolls into what our vision statement looks like. But we're essentially looking at you know, education, healthcare, economic development. I mean, economic development is community development. All of these kind of are intertwined. But how do we get that affordable, dependable, reliable speed we need um, across a relatively vast geography. We're 40 miles across. All of our county partners know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, you have a great area that you're trying to serve and, and just throw, doing a backbone at um, you know, a cost of you know, $50,000 a mile can really, really be difficult uh, as far as connecting communities. Um, our, fortunately for us, we have a, a nuclear kind of geography that's our, our metro planning area. They have good internet, but as soon as you get outside of that, it really is very difficult. And when we're talking about kind of covering that that great distance, that that's really where our need comes in uh, as a community. Um, and and so we have kind of uh, un, underserved and unserved maps. Um, and 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 our show here, I think that this is for our community. This would be nothing new. If I told our elected officials, hey, in the rural areas, the east and west, we don't have very good internet, they'd say, yeah, yeah, we've heard that from our constituents area you can see that's a lot of hospitals and, and, and pharmacies and schools and libraries and police and public safety are they have pretty good service but when you look at those unserved underserved you can really see um, what we're talking about you know the there's some fixed wireless assets in some of our community that's why we have these kind of radial holes in our our, our unserved area but I, I, I will say when you look at those there's still some times when if somebody's a little low, from a topography standpoint, or maybe there's trees in the way and they say, while I'm on the map is being served, I don't feel that I'm necessarily that served. So 
our vision is is kind of like I'm assuming everyone else's vision, right? Trying to put together some sort of scalable solution um, that meets the needs of our our residents um, while offering a kind of a reliable, uh, you know, good serviced, high speed product and. This is where sometimes the the perception kind of you know becomes the reality maybe, um, and and how so how do you how do you prioritize the strategy right how do you make sure that we focus on the targeted areas we need um, I will say we've been very fortunate one of our communities received a, a, an allocation uh, for broadband internet and that's amazing um, we have some great partners on the ground that have, have applied for grants previously for us. Uh, we have an active NTIA grant uh, for the county. Uh, and so, so the kind of rolling out of this program, um, we still have to, to make some decisions as a county. We have to meet with our, our, our final decision makers to make sure that their expectations are met, to make sure that the information we've you know, gathered from this process is properly conveyed to them, and then develop out of that a final deployment strategy. Because we don't have a specific project or a partner saying, hey, we'd love to do X number of miles of fiber in this area, and, and that's how we would move forward. So we still have a little bit of fact finding. So there's some of this is maybe a little more nebulous than some of the other presentations, but we, we think we're in a good place and we're very happy to kind of move this forward. Um, I, I kind of love though what we've learned, and I, and I alluded to it a little bit, um, probably second bullet, that the access is not solely predicated on you know having you know broadband providers um, but trying to define what is that affordability um, so when we surveyed and i feel like a lot of the survey results we heard people get amazing numbers um, we didn't get a ton of numbers but you will notice that our dots are very well saturated within our community as it relates to kind of a geographic distribution uh, and it really was helpful we looked at our, our our respondent clusters. Obviously, our partners in Pembroke Township and Hopkins Park have been very successful in their surveys, and they have quite a few more. But we did a really good job of covering the entire county, and from that, we were able to gather kind of that underserved, unserved community, and and that gave us from this, I would say, kind of three key pieces between seven and ten, three and four people. So, 70 to 75% of our, our population is disappointed with affordability, speed, and reliability. And so that becomes something we're talking about because we do have providers that are offering 50 megabits per second. They would say that that's reasonable internet, but if people can't afford it, then that, that becomes a problem. And I think this next one is, is kind of the key. 86% of our respondents are telling us they don't have connectivity or they have low speeds, thus they're underserved right, by the, the connectivity report, but 95% of people are indicated they're being unserved or underserved. And so that becomes that perception. We're, we're talking about 19 of 20 people are saying we're unserved. And while that's not an exact, they're not exact alignment on the percentages, a large portion of our population is defined as that, but it's even worse in that people who maybe are in that margin, that 9% margin, still feel like they're underserved. And I, and I feel like that becomes what the level of pain a particular resident might feel with their, with their need for broadband. How much are they able to afford? How much are they able to tolerate? Um, you know, what is their expectation of, of that internet? Because if you expect it to be great and it's very expensive um, and it works all the time, it's kind of like a Truman Triangle, right? You end up with this, it, it can't be cheap and it can't be great and it can't be, uh, you know, like the, the the highest of quality all in the same you know, at the same time. So it's like, what is what becomes that trade off? And even with some of our programming, I still feel like there are residents who feel like the service they're receiving is not worth necessarily the cost. Or if they do have issues based on weather because it's a more satellite based service, then they really feel like they're paying a lot of money and not getting a lot of value. And I feel like that's frustrating for people because when you're wireline connected, internet's great, it, it rains, it, it's windy, it doesn't really particularly matter to you. You always have internet, sure it's expensive, but you're happy with the service. Where we see kind of our crux is it's very expensive and we're unhappy. So 
on the provider side, we're we're very fortunate actually on our call on our calls for over the last 14 weeks, we've had two providers come along with us. They've been great partners in, in our community, um, you know, in, in, in applying for grants and trying to get funds for us. We're still working on a third provider that's in the area. Um, and one of the things that we're kind of talking about is how does the county fulfill some of that barrier to entry? If our existing providers are saying, I'd love to get to a rural community, but the eight miles of fiber to run to them is just a cost we can't get back. Is that something that the, the jurisdictions involved could provide or the, whether they would either able, apply for grants, utilize some sort of ARPA funds or local funds to maybe bridge that gap to make that, that service make sense. I always look at it kind of like toll roads, this idea that if you don't wanna build a backbone, maybe we'll build it and we charge a nickel per user per month and then we get a little bit of fee out of it. And there's some value to the community uh, and, and some real value to the elected officials from that. So kind of next, again, next steps for us, and I still feel like this, we're, we're trying to make sure that we bring all of our elected officials along in this process, trying to get them kind of up to speed on what some best options are. At the staff level, we have to present a few options to our, our committee and subsequent boards to kind of talk through what what that would look like. And, and then it kind of rolls into the, you know, we have areas of rural need, east and west. Um, east currently has a grant, you know, available to them. So maybe maybe west is where we focused. I think that that'll be determined by our elected officials. And then kind of what what does what makeup is that, right? So what community members need to be involved in that? What would the P3 look like? Whose resources are allocated? And I feel like for us, one of our recommended steps is gonna to be to kind of further the study from a third party, uh, where we have a, a, a great bit of staff evaluation and local community support and, and the surveys are awesome, but I think having a, a third party, and, 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 I, and I told this to Bill earlier this week, thank you to, to the Benton Institute, uh, to U of I Extension for bringing you know, some resources to us to where I, I'm not gonna to go to my board and say, I'm lost on who we're gonna ask because I have somebody's contact info where we could say, here's a group or similar group like this could, could do some sort of data collection for us to talk about flushing out more of our broadband strategy and seeing where it might make sense to be able to deploy and seeing where that dollar could be maximized. Because I feel like for our elected official, when we talk about tax dollars, the recommendation they're going to want is how can we best use our dollars to get the, the best value for our community. So <clears throat> that, that kind of comes for us. What does our local funding stack look like? How much state involvement would, would happen? And then what would potentially be the federal ask? I feel like we're not ready for a federal grant application at this point. Um, they're relatively extensive. Uh, and I, I, do, I feel like without having a partner drive the application, which is what we've done previously, where we really leaned heavily on our partners. I feel like at the staff level, we wouldn't be prepared to do an application without an, an extra step from a broadband plan development. So kind of that's the end of our presentation. Again, it's not very directed. We've kept it intentionally um, vague to really allow our elected officials some latitude within that process while still giving them some direction on, on maybe some next steps to take. Thank you, Ben. Well done. And uh, I think for a county that has really just begun its broadband efforts, your team has made a lot of progress and uh, uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, and, and hopefully your county board will give you some time. I don't know if a, it's a workshop kind of setting that uh, really hash out the kind of those strategies and the priority and, and so on, because uh, I know you have strong uh, goals to keep your county board kind of in the leadership position. So I, I think giving, getting them to give you the time will be a, an important next step. Good. Uh, next up is uh, uh, is the CDC from Pembroke Township in Hopkins Park, and uh, uh, they were lucky to and uh, through their diligence. A lot of this is not luck; it's a preparation meeting opportunity. And so they uh, worked with their Congress member to bring home some 
uh, what we used to call bacon and uh, uh, some dollars for broadband uh, in their community. Uh, welcome to the CDC. Thank you. Well, hello, Bill. How are you doing? And Great, my name thank is you. my name is Jahari. For those who um, are not familiar, I know we've gone a long stretch of 14 weeks. I'm so glad that this is the end, but um, it's kind of a, a bittersweet end because it's actually been a very enjoyable and a, a great learning experience for all of us on our team. And so just wanted to thank the Benton team and everybody else involved on, on pooling this together and pooling our resources together and our, our camaraderie. So thank you. Um, if I can share this, do I have access to share the screen now? access yes all right let's see if we can do this okay i hope everyone can see this slideshow is it um has it pulled up can everyone see it looks great excellent thank you so um as ben um our previous presenter ben of kinky county we um, um mentioned we are one of those township areas that are that it resides in Kentucky County. Um, we are in Pembroke Township, which is one of the largest townships in Kentucky County. Um, and we're literally on the border edge of, of Indiana in the far south southeast corner of the county itself. Um, we are a team of, of community members, our CDC, uh, we're the Community Development Corporation, should I say? Um, which we were developed um, three years ago to address, dire directly address problems and issues in our community, but be community-based. So our mission is to, uh, to provide community-based action in leadership, sustainability, and enrichment, as well as preserve and protect the cultural, historical, and environmental legacy of the Pembroke Hopkins Park community. It's a historic community um, it is um, nearly 150 years um, where it has had a huge African-American presence, and we are a very diverse community growing in our Hispanic population. Um, and um, so we just invited, uh, we just invite a lot of people to join us in our community. Um, as far as our broadband initiative, uh, we've been working on broadband, let me go this way. We've been, our team has been working on this broadband um, or addressing the broadband issues in our community. Since January of last year, we first did a survey um, that came along. And so we've had a wonderful team since this cohort team started, we've had a wonderful team joining us and working diligently on our broadband solutions over the last year and a half. Um, and this is part of our team members here. It consists of um, ex-officials, current officials, as well as people that work directly within our township um, in official capacities or on boards, and as well as um, we've had um, two school uh, representations, uh, IT directors from two schools that helped us along the way of getting our vision met. We worked through this cohort. We did uh, develop the, we worked uh, closely with our Kenke County representatives on the vision plan and um, which for the entire county, which was definitely, you know, includes inclusive of our community. So we really appreciate that. And we're very really proud of, of helping to develop a countywide vision plan where as far, as far as broadband is concerned. Our vision is to provide scalable broadband internet service to all areas of Kentucky County to support the current and future needs of commerce, education, healthcare, residents and visitors. Our primary goal is to provide a, a quality level of service at an affordable price, utilizing the economically feasible technology and infrastructure options while not sacrificing speed, service, or reliability. Um, throughout this problem, just showing a, a general timeline, as I mentioned before, we started doing surveys in our community and directed a needs assessment to Department of Commerce and Economics about our broadband needs. Um, we were invited, we were um, provided a couple of um, ISP providers to work diligently with us throughout the year and a half. Um, one of those providers is Limco, who's been on uh, one of the cohort members in, in on these calls for the last 14 weeks as a possible solution. 
And so we came up with a grant um, for that we did submit to the broadband um, for the broadband grant this year. We did come up with a grant solution that we did submit. Um, of course, that has been postponed, but we also realized we were going to be, you know, as a result of these sessions, that we want to modify that and resubmit it um, to reflect all of the information and knowledge that we have learned thus far over the last 14 weeks. Uh, being awarded this, this accelerated broadband planning is another thing that was really a great uh, effort for our community. And we joined efforts with the Kanki County, um, you know, um, our Kanki County planning, planning party. The other thing that Bill was referring to and also Ben was that we did receive funding from our one of our senators um, on broadband efforts um, and that's Senator um, Robin Kelly. And um, so we were awarded part of, of what we needed to, to outfit our entire broadband um, upgrades in our community. Um, and 3 million you know, is a phenomenal amount don't get us uh, wrong with that, but we also know that it is just a start. And so that's why we're still, um, you know, um, going after all the other available funding opportunities that is that support available in for this broadband for broadband, you know, solutions. And especially because we want to um, deal with, uh, you know, making sure that fiber is to every home but there's a process in, involved in that and we also realize. So just real briefly, Pembroke Township, as you can see in the red square area, is a township of approximately 2,100 people. And we are very large, we're 52 square miles. We also have a wonderful uh, um, geography that we have some of the rarest um, you know, come, um, ecosystems in the world that still exist there that can be a little bit of a, a problem in terms of general broadband because it's like dealing with the rainforest. So we had to tell everyone, it's like having a rainforest in your, you know, in the county where you have, you don't want to tear down your rainforest, but you still need broadband solutions. And we know that it's possible because um, other countries, that have beautiful ecosystems. They still have, um, they still have excellent broadband that's been deployed. So we know we don't have to cut trees down in order to have broadband solutions in our community. We want to respect both. The other thing is our population is near 2,100 as well. Like I was saying, um, we have about 1,200 homes. Largest demographic is 45 to 54 year olds. The number of families with school age youth is, uh, is over 42%. So we have nearly a half of our population have school age children. Uh, because it's such a widespread community, it's um, our density per mile is only about 39 people per mile. Um, when we did, here is the, Ben showed this particular uh, map earlier um, as far as when we were actually doing the current surveys, um, nearly 99% of our people are literally unserved or considered unserved, um, where we have less than 10 megabytes per second um, as far as our broadband availability, um, our rates. Um, we do have some fiber in our community there, but it's aging, as someone else said earlier, it's very aging and it's an AT AT&T uh, deployed system. There is satellite that's offered in our community as well as um, other people result to hotspots or MIFIs. And a lot of a large majority of our community rely on cell phones, which even our cell phone systems are very, very sketchy in our community. So we do not have adequate cell phone service in our community to be even a backup for what we're, you know, for um, connection, internet connection. As far as comments from our community, one of our disabled residents said it best. Uh, she just sent, literally sent this out last week and said, this is a complete, this is sad. Um, you know, the current internet provider that they're using is refusing to lower their rates. Um, she's nearly at $90 a month and without service. Knowing that we are not receiving any, any other um, full service, refusing to provide 
repairs, they take money every month. And this is what they literally, uh, the majority of our people in our survey results were saying. Um, they are exhausted with these particular systems um, that are provided the current you know, provisions in our area. And um, they just got noticed that these are even considered end of life systems. And they're not, the service providers are not even going to um, take care of the systems or repair, offer any kind of repair or service. So this is what we're left with in our community. Our official places have no access, little to no access. Um, some of the immediate needs in our community. Um, last year or earlier this year, we had a newspaper that um, the, the, it, the Daily Journal, Kenki Daily Journal, said 60% of our community students were truants. And, and as a result of the pandemic, so our children literally were walking the streets crying because they had no access to internet at home. They could not do any homework. And they were literally crying, walking, on, walking up and down the streets. I witnessed that myself. It's a deplorable situation. So we've lost two years of education, uh, prop, you know, properly educated um, progress in our community as a result of, result of being unserved broadband wise. Telehealth was another serious thing. We have a lot of disabled people in our community that have need complete access to their doctors or physicians. And they're either on monitors like pacemakers and they need internet connection for that. Home businesses increased as a result of the pandemic as well. Um, and I mentioned that our municipalities, our fire department lack internet connection. And even we have a large farming community over 70% of the land masses in our community is um, by large farmers that need satellite communication. So these are some of the needs. We don't have the luxury of waiting two, three, four, five years from now. Um, we, need, we need broadband now. And um, so some of the priority strategies that we, we've um, um, received from our community members is $40 low cost, low monthly cost, environmentally friendly, minimum high speed of 100 um, megabytes per second, immediate deployment. And we also would love to see community ownership being very committed into that process. When we looked at the priority and options, so affordability was one, what kind of systems would, would give us that, the kind of structure that we were needing, we looked at affordability, availability, accessibility, the speed, the ownership, and long-term solutions. And from the, the when we analyzed both fixed wireless and fiber solutions, you can see where the, our chart here of what we um, gathered. We came up with that a hybrid model would work best for our community, having a fiber backbone and fixed wireless. Um, support um, throughout. And so that is uh, fiber for our economic development corporate, uh, corridor, which would, would increase our manufacturing in our community down our primary areas and followed with, along with our fixed wireless to every home to make sure that all of our homes are, are provided with strong internet. We realized that some of the one of working with one of our ISP providers um, that we can deploy the fixed wireless in our community, which would be um, reliable as well as having um, be low in, impact on our environment, but but flexible enough to reach all of our, all of our homes. We mentioned that um, with the community based partnership, public uh, based public-private partnership, developing network operating centers in our community would give us more direct access, but it also provide us immediate customer support, payment collection, technical support, some of the things that we were not able to get, not having that direct ownership, but also creating jobs in our community was very important. This is what we looked at in terms of our mapping of where our fiber 
um, distribution would would at least start. And this is a starting pay, uh, spot for our fiber that we hope to have um, deployed very soon. Um, we do have a, and this is going down our, our central and our main streets, which are, we considered our economic development corridors. And if we can get this, then, you know, this is one of our strong suits. While we're building out the rest of our community, but starting here would provide a strong base, even for our fixed wireless to tap into um, along these routes. Here it was showing our possible towers, our fixed wireless towers, and where they can be deployed that'll provide access to all of our homes. This shows the radius of the fixed wireless towers, which will give us 98% coverage in our communities. And it also shows still where our fiber wool routes will take. Um, this is just more detailed information of what can be offered from our fixed wireless provider. As far as equipment that's needed and a working budget that's under two million, a um, little bit over $2 million. As far as the user equipment in the homes, it will take modems and SIM cards, modem installations, POE installation, local office and support persons to actually develop. And we're looking at an operational cost total within our community of under $2,000 a month. So providing you know, a possible solution to our customers at around $40 per month. And given the fact that we are also applying for the um, Illinois Connection um, Program for low and fixed in income participants, they can get their bill down as low as $10 a month. So what does that mean for us in terms of our, our ultimate solution? We're talking about phase one, where we're looking at broadband solutions now immediately. We can deploy these uh, with our fixed wireless, you know, provided that the ground is not freeze. We're talking 90 days, less than 90 days, we can have coverage for our entire community, along with installing our fiber, which is uh, now we are looking at, um, you know, um, our fiber ISP providers. There are several we're looking at, and that can be done within the 18 months as far as going down our our um, economic corridor. And then our last phases would be in completing our implementing our plans um, with the all throughout our community. And I think I'm even mixed one of them. This is what our eventual what we want our fiber to look like throughout our, our entire community being so that everyone can have access to high speed fiber over the next uh, several years, five, five years. Max, this is our projection of what we hope to look like. Um, we even are looking into community-owned cell towers, and this is um, a possible configuration where we will be addressing our cell tower issues as well. So that's the end of our presentation, um, and we're standing up for broadband now, not later. We don't have the luxury or the time, and our children, the future of our children, they're, they're, they're in need of it right now. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jahari. I think that's uh, exciting uh, to see your plan kind of uh, presented. I know there's been a lot of discussion, and, and uh, hopefully the Accelerate program has helped you guys sharpen your pencils and your thinking about how this would happen, uh, when and how. So uh that's exciting to have those dollars i won't say in hand but certainly committed to your team to to move forward on this so uh it's a start thank you for, for sure it's work. definitely a start thank you good thank you uh next up i said we we're going alphabetical then i said livingston is next so let's go with livingston then we'll come back to kaskaskia after that livingston welcome thank you How's everybody this morning? Hope everybody's good. I'd like to. Thanks, thank you. I'd like to start by thanking uh, uh, Benton and Bill and Adrian. Uh, a shout out to Grace who helped our team 
uh, quite a bit. Uh, thankful for the, uh, the opportunity to be involved in this and uh, to help get our plan uh, started. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do and just uh, looking forward to the work to come. Oh, here it is. There it is. All good? Yep. All right, great. Uh, like I said, thank the Illinois Extension, the IDOC, the, you know, Connecting Heartland and the Benton and Bill. Thank everybody for uh, allowing us to participate in this and be a part of it. So thank you. Uh, the team members, uh, we had a, a wide diversity of team members involved in, in this, uh, county board members, business meters, uh, business leaders, uh, the GLC EDC, uh, the Village of Dwight, the uh, Prairie Central High School, all provided uh, members to, to make sure that we're diversified and uh, would like to thank all of them. Uh, Connect Livingston envisions an equitable deployment and uh, use of robust, affordable and broadband infrastructure that improves the quality of life and competitiveness for every resident, the business, the organizations of Livingston County. Uh, starting with the maps, uh, here's where they say we have coverage. And if you notice, we have uh, in the red and the medium green is where it says that we have, technically we have uh, sufficient coverage in, in that part of the county. And then the, the pale green, and the white are the underserved, unserved areas of the county. And uh, you can see that quite a bit of the county is underserved and, and uh, unserved. And even in the, some of the pale green, I think you'll uh, see when the, the other maps come up that it's uh, not necessarily as good as the, the picture, this picture would, would like to show. Uh, what we have learned, well, starting with the, the survey, we ran our survey from June 29th to July 29th. Uh, these are the dates that we ran it, and that was for the purposes of the data for this, uh, for this presentation. Although we left ours open-ended so that we can continue to uh, collect data and uh, hopefully use that uh, further down the line. Uh, we had 393 survey responses, 91% of them were home or business, 6% was business, 1% community building, and 15% was uh, farm ag. Uh, the Livingston County Broad Bay results, the representative, um, as you can see uh, from the dots, we got a pretty good coverage of the county. There's a few spots uh, here and there where we didn't get any, but uh, overall, I thought it was a good representation of uh, what we have in the county and uh, a good response uh, for the survey. Now, as you can see here, the unserved and underserved, uh, here again, a lot of responses and a lot of the responses are, we're not, you know, it's not uh, not voting well for, for broadband in Livingston County. It's uh, quite a bit, I mean, you've seen it through the other counties that we have, uh, like everyone else, lacking in, in service to most areas in the county. 77% uh, of the respondents reported needing to resort to cellular data. And what that goes to show is the unreliability and the need for improvement of all of our areas of uh, internet uh, providers. 64% uh, of the respondents were not satisfied with the affordability. 59% were not satisfied with the speed and 56 weren't, weren't satisfied with the reliability. So it's you know, showing that of the respondents, high, way over 50% are not happy with either affordability, speed or reliability. Uh, the key survey findings, 58% are unserved in our county show a speed of less than 25 megabits upload and three down. 
which is the FCC standard for unserved. So 58% is unserved, 86% is underserved, showing less than 120 download, meeting the FCC standard for underserved. So a large part of the county is, is not being taken care of as far as uh, internet. Uh, survey comments. Uh, we did have some very colorful ones, but uh, we, didn't, we didn't include those like Bond. I, that was really, really good of Bond. I, I like that. Um, but what these comments show is the same thing that everybody else is showing is that it's, it's not affordable, it's not reliable, and uh, sometimes you can't get it and it's slow. And it's, you know, I'm not going to read all the comments, but what that does is show that throughout the county, there are issues. And it, it seems to be that way for, for every county that we've listened to so far. So uh, now it's estimated that uh, nearly 58% of the population lack access to basic broadband coverage. The Livingston County uh, Board uh, broadband team is working to ensure that all residents, all residents have access to affordable connectivity of at least 100 megabits symmetrical. Um, the interview summaries, uh, what we found was there is no reward without effort in talking to uh, the people that we talked to. Uh, there is and there will be hard work to be done, uh, but the reward for these efforts is is a huge payoff for years for our kids and our grandkids and all the residents of Livingston County down the line, but there's a lot of work to be done. And what we also found, I was no once, not one size fits all. You know, there's no approach for us that says, okay, uh, if we just run fiber everywhere, uh, like Pembroke, you know, we have a, a, the third largest county in Illinois. So we've got a lot of, a lot of footprint to cover. And this can't be done by just one provider and will involve multiple providers working together with all the entities to achieve the common goal of making sure that we have coverage throughout Livingston County. And for that collab collaboration is imperative for not just ISPs, but for, for county, county government, municipalities, um, private partnerships, public uh, partnerships, all these need to work together um, otherwise, this can't be done. Use every, use every resource at our disposal, local, state, federal, uh, county, municipality, private, public, any, any, anywhere that we can, we can get a resource to use resources is what we need to do. And then leveraging every dollar possible um, based on those collaborations. Um, one thing that we, as, as a county board member, we need to eliminate the political red tape. And uh, the more difficult that we as a county or we as a municipality or, or, or those as the broadband team, the more difficult we make it, the less likely we're gonna get a response and help others come in to uh, collaborate. And we need to leverage our current resources, those that are already here and already have a, a, a foot in the game, so to speak, those that already are part of this, leverage those so that we can use those resources that we already have to continue to grow this, this network, this spider web of, uh, of uh, providers and links to whether it's uh, wireless, broadband, fiber, all those. Collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. That's what we need to do. I understand strategy overview. Uh, establish a financial commitment by the county board and being on the county board, I'm hoping to help uh, proliferate that. Uh, allows Connect Livingston to continue to work through the Accelerate program, continue to lose, use all this knowledge that we've gained in this 14 weeks and so thankful for that. Analyzing the data that we just received this week and continuing to garner uh, information from, that, from those surveys, and then identifying the areas of greatest need and impact. Uh, like we said, we saw on parts of the map where there was, there was no response. We're hoping to get responses from those areas 
and see what the needs are. We see the needs great throughout the county. And um, what we need to do is start creating solutions through public and private relationships that we've already started um, and just continue on, on that path, uh, applying for grant funding and implementing those solutions. Leverages federal and state funding to increase impact of the ARPA funding. Uh, Connect Illinois matching grants possibly could turn 3 million of Livingston County ARPA funds into 6 million or more. Um, federal broadband equity access, the uh, deployment, the BEAD program, program details. Um, as an example, uh, Serban, who is a, uh, a broadband uh, provider, uh, got a $15 million federal grant that created Serban, and all it required was $2 million in state and local funding. And I think that's a perfect example of how we can up up the the bill for uh, if, you know take our money and, and make it work for us through through these programs and explore other funding opportunities uh, the, you know the rural digital opportunity fund uh, connectivity program reconnect and use all of those to try and make our dollars work for us. Uh, we're going to host a community anchor institution town hall uh, Livingston County the municipalities 911 our schools, Heartland Community College, the library, museum, hospital, all these resources and to define the resources that we need and share where possible. And does, you know, does fiber backhaul for an E911 or a school tower help others? We need to ensure that we're not duplicating our efforts throughout the county and that uh, if E911 is putting up a tower, how can that benefit other areas of the county? How can it benefit the schools? How can it benefit the, uh, the residents of that area? What can we do in collaboration together? And what about the residents along the path of that tower? Um, you know, if you're talking about uh, running fiber and, and creating a uh, Pembroke showed, or I don't know, uh, showed running, uh, running fiber throughout the county on, on your main roads or to, to the townships and using those to build these spider webs of, of not just fiber, but, uh, but Wi-Fi so that uh, we can create a, a good web and create uh, pieces of this pie that we can cover all of the county. And then host local provider town halls and focus on the smaller providers that we have in the, uh, in the rural communities. We have you know, small, small companies, small providers that, are, that have these pieces and continue to use those and, and how can they work to help us um, create a larger network and be part of the solution and identify and plan for future requirements, you know, smart cities, traffic control, safety act, and virtual IT companies ensure that no area is left behind in the county. And in conclusion, uh, what this has shown us is that there's a great need in our county for uh, broadband, um, not just in, in, in the rural areas, but in some of the communities, some of the larger communities. Uh, they have it, but it's not, uh, it's not great. And uh, I think the opportunities are there if we work hard and we uh, work together with all these entities and between the providers and schools and governments, there's no reason why we can't come up with a plan and implement a plan that uh, would take care of the people who work. What we've seen through the, uh, the COVID is that um, we were ill-prepared for what happened. And uh, unfortunately, our children suffered, uh, just like Pembroke said, our children suffered by not having the opportunities to, to be a part of schooling and uh, didn't get exactly what they should have got. Um, what we saw was our work lives, some, a lot of people's work lives changed, working from home and not having the, the broadband or the ability to get on. Um, I'm part owner in a coffee shop and we had a lot of people come in the coffee shop because we have good internet. And uh, we had a lot of kids come in because they don't have internet at home. So they, they were coming to the coffee shop to do their homework because they didn't have any other place to do it. And that's, I'm, that speaks volumes to me. And something that was said to me that, that uh, really lit, lit up 
broadband is the electricity of the 21st century. We can't live without it. Um, I actually used broadband was the telephone system of the 21st century, but I think uh, electricity is probably more. Uh, every home needs it. Every home should have it. So, and that concludes our presentation. Good. Thank you, Adrian. I see you have a question. Well, no, I have more of a comment, and Marty, I'm so happy to see that you're looking at the fiber backhaul for your E911, because I'm working with a, a county in Ohio that is doing the same exact thing, has five new E911 uh, towers and uh, is going to try to utilize the fiber backhaul that serves those two um, serve as the backbone for household internet. So I think that's a really great way to think. Uh, use your existing anchor institutions, right, to help you with your plan. So congratulations on identifying that as a strategy specifically. Thank you. Good. I really liked your push now to uh, get the county board to commit the dollars to broadband. I think when we say we, you know, we want the broadband providers to be a good partner, and but we also want to be a good partner ourselves. And certainty of commitment is really important. You don't want county boards at the last minute to say, "Oh, I guess you know we're not going to put in that four million dollars into this proposal." After the people have done the engineering, they've done their rest of the grant application, and, and so on. And that word gets around and. In a previous cohort in Illinois, we found out that a provider had kind of been snubbed by a community like five years earlier. And now the provider is still mad about it. Nobody even remembers the snub in the community, but the provider sure does. And so that kind of reputation for being either easy to work with or difficult to work with really is a, uh, an important consideration for your teams. Right. What you don't want is the ability to, you know, for uh, funding to come in or grants to come in that need matching funds, and then you come up short because you weren't foresighted enough to uh, make sure that you had the funding to cover that. Yeah, and even uh, if you can get that consensus on the board about the direction distance they're willing to go, I think that really helps help set the parameters. Thank you uh, to Livingston. Nice job. Uh, Kaskaskia area is next. There we go. Can everyone hear us okay? Yes. So I'm Stephen Fouch. I'm happy to present on behalf of the Kaskaskia group. Um, just want to thank the Illinois Department of Commerce and Office of Broadband, Illinois Extension, connecting the Heartland and the Benton Institute. I know for me, it's been a really eye-opening process. It's kind of disheartening to see that all of us are in the same spot, but I'm also more hopeful, very hopeful because of this group. And it seems like that as municipalities, counties, regions, and a state, we're moving in the right direction. So, yeah. You know, these are our team members. We were very lucky to have a super involved group of people who worked really hard. Um, and I did want to note, uh, President Evans made made sure that uh, I wanted to let you know that we have many files available on our team site that you can all have access to. So George wanted me to, to let you know we're happy to share all of that information in addition to our presentation. Oops. Um, so our mission, uh, to, to provide accessible and affordable high-speed internet and cellular infrastructure that serves and supports the evolving educational, agricultural, healthcare, emergency, emergency services, and economic needs of the residents in the Kaskaskia College region, while also incorporating and respecting the proud rural commitment to agricultural preservation in the district. 47.3% of the buildings in, in our region do not have access to the minimum standard. Um, so uh, that's that's 25 megabits per second. This is the area that we chose to really focus on was Clinton County, Marion County, and Washington County. 
And out of the buildings that do have the minimum standard, eight, almost 8% eight of those do not have access to the 100 by 20 service. All the areas outlined here are designated as underserved. It, it's a shame because this is well over 50% of our, our region that does not have um, access. Uh, so, you know, this should be a strong call of action to our group. And I think it was, especially for the, the people involved, our volunteers. And some of our survey comments, very similar to, to other folks. Um, you know, people are generally frustrated. They feel like they're paying too much for a poor product. And our, our survey was conducted in Clinton, Marion, Fayette, and Washington counties. And yeah, as you see, some people have been frustrated for 25 years with their internet. Um, this is a, a response that's very close to our heart in higher ed. And I would like to read, I'd like to read this. I timed out my online classes because my house lost internet. I reconnected four times as the internet turned on and off. It was a disaster. I became stressed out because I couldn't complete my midterm exam because of the poor internet. And I didn't want the teacher to think I wasn't prepared. I wasn't able to complete after talking to my teacher on Monday and she had to reset the test. It was a miserable experience. <laughs> so, um, you know, having access to the internet is far beyond entertainment or even connectivity to other folks. I mean, the future, especially in rural areas, is going to be online education. It's only going to continue to grow and you can't have quality online education without quality internet. So, um, this is something that we're very passionate about here at the college. This is the, our dispersion rate. Um, this is in Marion County. Um, we had a good number of responses, but I think the overall dispersion was excellent. Um, some of these areas are very, very rural. Washington County is the most rural county in our group with one third of the population of the other counties. Um, so even here, there are a few responses, but the dispersion rate is good. Clinton County had great responses. I think, you know, Cheryl Brinkman in our group was really able to work with the Clinton County board to get the call out and, you know, very thankful, thankful to have so many responses from this area. And so in our uh, provider interviews, we've met with two so far and we have more scheduled, but one of the larger providers was almost uninterested in helping us at all because there was low return on investment. But we know because the area that Wabash Communications covers is more rural than many areas of our um, cohort. So we know it's possible if you have the want to. So, and we interviewed Wabash and they were fantastic. They started almost as like a grassroots effort in one small area because, you know, their desire to get it done, they've been able to expand and cover a huge rural area with quality broadband. Um, so the darker shades of red here represent the folks with uh, cable access and the lighter shade of brown is the, the uh, broadband in our area. These are more, more information on our underserved areas and the density of households. Um, these are areas with more than 11 unserved households by square mile. So you can see the need here is obvious. And I think, you know, it, it's nice and it was important for us to mention some of the smaller towns because they can kind of fall off the radar, but they need it as bad as anybody else. So our strategic overview uh, focus on underserved areas in Marion, Clinton, and Washington counties. Our established plan, you know, we check three of these, research and analysis complete, build awareness is ongoing, but we feel like we've done a good job with that. Gathering public support, public support is well underway, and uh, engaging the ISP providers is still a work in progress. Um, also, the funding and grant application process is underway. I feel like we'll be in good shape there because we do a, a lot of grant writing through the college. So uh, when we get to that point, I, I feel solid. Uh, and with commitment and support, we can definitely execute. Uh, so what we've learned um, 
you know, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, collaboration is a key component. Uh, data analysis and evidence-based information presentation will be key to success. Some low-hanging fruit in our area, but much bigger tasks for several of the unserved areas. Broadband and cellular services must be treated as a basic utility. This was just reiterated by Livingston. I mean, this is, you know, almost a human right at this point, especially when it comes to uh, the disbursement of educational materials um, and for economic growth. So potential barriers, barriers are little return on investment interest from some ISP providers in the rural areas. I, I feel like that'll be easy to overcome ju just as evidenced by you know, what Wabash is doing. And land and zoning laws and regulations should not be taken for granted. Uh, volunteer and support for the project must be maintained to succeed. So that's something that we're already formulating a plan to work, work on is to keep everyone involved and moving forward. Um, some of the positives, we did have overwhelming com community support. Um, uh, the date collected supports need and provides the evidence that we require for future grant awareness. Um, knowledge base is increased for those who have been active in this process. So moving forward, we need to keep going. We know the funds are there. So it's just about um, showing our need and, and uh, completing the grants. Uh, gain more consistent and solidified support and enhanced ownership. So we really need, we had great support from Clinton County. It would be awesome to see the same level of support from the other county boards where there was in Clinton County, we had involvement from almost every board member. Um, so we must be proactive and not reactive. So we're going to lead the charge here. We know that's our responsibility as volunteers. Um, continue with aware, aware, awareness of the campaign. Um, continue to solicit support from major stakeholders and pursue our grant opportunities on the state and federal level. And, you know, we've got it three times, but the funds are there. So we just need to do the work to go after it. And, uh, we had similar funding opportunities to everyone else, our local funding, the American Rescue Plan funds, uh, state, Connect Illinois, you know, federal, American Rescue Plan, NTIA, USDA, and the EDA. So thank you very much. I was happy to share on behalf of our group and looking for any feedback you have to offer. Good. I think that uh, I like your lessons learned and kind of next steps. I think those are really understandable to folks as a as you're moving forward. So I appreciate the uh, uh, reflection, too, on the varying uh, level of support across your region and how important that is to uh, uh, spread that farther and wider. But I think one of the uh, big things that also makes that happen is that when Clinton County gets results, they get to move forward on projects because they have that commitment from, you know, widespread and, and uh, uh, strong commitment. You know, that's really going to make a difference and people can then see, you know, how important that is and get on board themselves with those kind of commitments. I think that's that's going to be important. Absolutely. Adrienne, any comment? Yeah, I was going to say I've really enjoyed working with this group. I've been the person that's been privileged to sit in on it. And, and this is a tough one because it's a multi-county strategy. But I think they, um, I would agree totally with Bill that having the uh, Clinton County Board so involved on your team and uh, the reach that you've had into that particular uh, uh, regional part of your area is really gonna serve you well as you, as you uh, sort of get everybody else in Washington and Marion uh, excited. I also think it's wonderful to keep those discussions going with Wabash. Um, you know, they're really right next door to you and they should just edge out and, and help you get served. So I know you're going to talk to some other people, but they've all also secured um, Connect Illinois funding. So they have experience uh, working with the state already, which, of course, is a really good thing. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Ogle. Welcome, Ogle County. Hi there. Bill, I'm going to try to share my screen here, and Pat's going to do the narration. Let me turn a few things off here. Ogle and partners, I should say. 
Absolutely. Sure. All right. Okay, let's turn this Looks off. good. Okay, that looks good. Pat, are you there? I am. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and go through the slides and it's all yours. All right. All right, so broadband for all and our team members. Um, we have a couple counties here. So we have Ogle County, uh, Lee County, Putnam County, uh, Growth Dimensions, uh, Economic Development, which is Boone County. Um, and I have to say that our team was um, pretty diverse in regards to the county lines um, and everybody participated, which is exactly what we um, anticipated, but it, it was a good team and we came up with some good ideas. Okay. Vision statement. So pretty much uh, just as everyone else, our vision statement. Get my slides are to move ahead here. There we go. There you go. Um, we want um, availability, reliability, high performing, high speed, affordable to all residents, um, businesses, organizations, and farms in North Central Illinois region. Um, most definitely, we want to promote educational, economic, and informational opportunities. Okay. Uh, recognizing our urgent needs, um, obviously, high speed. Uh, broadband, the middle mile for all of our residents, businesses, and institutions, um, enhancing uh, the what we have going on in farms in our rural settings. Uh, we know that we're hampered by the lack of access to the robust broadband. Our agricultural industry uh, is definitely changing the way that our farmers are operating their businesses nowadays. And uh, we have to be a part of that change and maintain strong internet connectivity in the rural communities. Rural broadband provides, um, it's difficult with the pricing. Um, we have a diverse and um, cost association with every growing demand for broadband capacity. Uh, one of the most viable needs is uh, modern, durable infrastructure and the robust broadband. Scope of our work, um, just like everyone else is talking about, uh, the initial objectives obviously uh, develop the broadband for all in Northern Illinois part and partnership focus on uh, identifying the broadband networks in the region, uh, both private and public, uh, not leaving anyone out because we need everyone to participate. Um, identifying the underserved areas by means of a needs assessment, our community survey um, and uh, other tools. Identifying the funding opportunities, uh, just as everyone has talked about, the public and the private uh, available. And then identify the physical, the policy, and other barriers to the network development. Survey comments. Um, we loved our survey comments. Um, so we have uh, three, three counties in here, and then Boone County, which was uh, their economic development. Um, as of um, August 6th, we had 1,324 uh, submissions, 791 of them uh, were complete responses. Um, all I know is we desperately need fiber optic internet in this area, affordable and uh, service as well. Um, we're not as colorful in the comments as I think it was Bond County, but we loved it. You know, if a bird passes wind, it absolutely does go down. And if we have snow, it goes down. And if we have rain or wind, it goes down. Our strategy, I think I got more comments here coming up. Um, maybe not. Okay. Um, strategy overall goals and objectives for the reason for the region. Um, obviously, we want to make sure that we're creating technology that's, you know, advanced broad, broadband network. Uh, it's got to be affordable, accessible, adaptable, and reliable. We want to leverage partnerships, resources across the region to support and expand network development. We want to make sure that we're serving and providing support for all uh, inclusive services for residents, education, businesses, agriculture, and tourism. And then incorporate scalable improvements that will enhance uh, existing infrastructure and new developments. So what did we learn? We learned a lot. We learned that it's really hard to do this in the summer. 
<laughs> um, and that you really need to have good partners um, and active participants, which um, our group was uh, was exceptional in regards to that. Um, and even in communities with uh, really good service, like Rochelle in Oregon, um, in the outer areas, truly underserved um, to the point of not even getting internet access. Um, commercial service is expensive in the rural areas. And it's typically not uncommon to have $125, $150 or more uh, bill for internet service. On the plus side, um, we we do have really good uh, public and private partners, and that's what we need to hone in on and, and move forward with. In um, Ogle County, we had 222 uh, complete responses. Um, some of the comments that you'll see in here is that um, moved from an area with broadband to an area that doesn't have it. And um, obviously it's sorely missed. Uh, today's connected devices, obviously it's really hard to do. Would love to have access to broadband at home. Boone County, uh, and this is the economic development side, had 88 complete responses. Um, and you can read for yourself there that um, don't have access to any broadband other than uh, through cellular companies. And uh, it's very ex expensive. Lee County, Lee County did a great job getting surveys out and back. Uh, they had 309 responses. And again, the same comments though, would love to have a high speed choice. Uh, when we currently try and stream, we have a lot of buffering. Uh, I hear you on the buffering side. Um, and then if you add, you know, two kids to it, and then you add some farm equipment to it, um, yeah, very slow internet, if any. Putnam County, um, small county, but pretty darn dynamic, and uh, they did great with getting their responses in there. Uh, you have to love it when somebody says, what broadband? You have broadband? I don't have broadband. Um, Semi-remote area over 25 years um, have had plenty of unfulfilled promises, and hopefully we can fill those promises. Um, being a teacher, I had needed have needed internet service for the last three years in order to perform my job, attend meetings. The internet offered in Putnam County is too expensive and unreliable. Thankfully for the public library, offering a hotspot to me in order for me to perform my work duties. So key survey findings. These are a little disingenuous when we look at them because we're like, wow, we really have 26 download and upload of a seven. Um, and what I can say is not at my house because I have three uh, for a download and one for an upload. And that's with one person on, um, on the device at home. Um, so, so these are a little bit um, skewed data, as we'd say, yeah. Um, so Ogle County, what we did get off of it, Ogle County, 26 down and uh, upload of nine. Boone County had 51 and 11. Lee County, 38 and 10. And Putnam, 14 and 3. Um, I would say we need to work on that a little bit more. Key survey findings um, in regards to uh, the ISP breakdown. I'm going to steal from Bond County, and I think that we will put a pie together because that was a great chart that you had. Um, and this one is a little bit harder to see, um, but we do have a we have a variety of ISPs that we can certainly work with, and will be most definitely willing to work with. And hopefully, they all will come on board with us. Uh, Boone County, uh, we have satellite internet, it's unreliable, slow, and we have to, we have, uh, they buy it by the gig. Um, and again, if it's cloudy, windy, raining, uh, there is no internet. And then you run out of your data. And uh, yeah, then you throw a child into the mix and an, uh, and an adolescent into the mix. And uh, it, it is uh, quite the nightmare. We have uh, multiple providers in the past with little luck getting good, reliable internet. And it would be helpful to have, to be able to count on good service. 
Amen to that. Ogle County, um, nowhere near adequate, adequate for what I do. Um, been told by the provider that their equipment is outdated and um, have had them out at least once every other month to check for their system. Um, and again, pricing is uh, unrealistic in our area. Lee County um, <clears throat> called and begged and offered any solution we can think of to all area providers. No success, we tried satellite internet, but our geographical location made the connection exceedingly unreliable. Um, multiple times a day, my internet just stops working. Even when you are in the middle of something, you have to click refresh internet uh, when a box pops up. On an average, every three months, the service goes out, sometimes for three to five days. Uh, I, amen on that one. And we live in the country, so there isn't any other, isn't much choice. Putnam County, only access I have is with satellite service. I have checked with other providers and uh, they cannot provide any access. Hopefully to get, uh, hopeful to get fiber optic one day. Um, and you have to appreciate sad stories, slow speed and service. Most of the time we get less than three service and no one cares to come to our rural area to offer us what the city areas take care for, take for, for granted. And no capability of screaming. Yeah, buffering is the name of the game in the rural areas. So survey findings. We know that we have to have availability of service, delivery of service. And our basic goals are to go for a download speed of not less than 25 and an upload of not less than three. And real time is the name of the game. Things that we looked for uh, when we were talking with our providers, um, some of the a score, a scoring tool that we used at Ogle County when we went out for uh, some fiber. Um, next one. Things that uh, the provider needs to have when looking um, where you go from here. Okay. Um, you have to have your GIS departments involved. Um, obviously, they're going to be the ones that have helped shape the files, uh, obtain the address points, the codes, the census block, and our, GI, our GIS in uh, Ogle County, they were phenomenal in uh, assisting us with this. And being targeted in regards to the areas that they're shaping the files for um, is, is getting all of that backbone done so that we can work on the middle mile. So again, doing the, the pin number, contact information for the parcel, um, enterprise zones, for all of the coverage. Strategy for where we go. We must have everybody participating and uh, giving uh, information to their boards. We do have, we did, we put a resolution uh, out. All of the counties and economic development have um, supported it. And that was one of our biggest um, goals for the broadband for all. Um, we've had a couple other partners that want to come on and participate with us. Uh, one is uh, a city in Stevenson County that will be coming on board with us. Um, and the Farm Bureau and Bureau County is thinking about it. Um, our next goal is to work on our intergovernmental agreements with uh, each entity and continue on our mapping. Uh, second strategy will be for, um, you know, looking at our RQ and asking uh, for providers to submit their request for information. Um, continue on with our regional building of our maps. Um, 
again with our townships, making sure our townships were that they are part of the. We're looking at the uh, NTI process and the Illinois Connect process, and most definitely we'll be submitting in for a middle mile coming up at September 29th. Um, and then also having that, you know, three year, five year, seven year goal. Where are we going? What are we doing? How are we uh, staying up to date so that we don't get um, caught being behind? Strategy three, we just keep moving forward. And by doing that, um, we make sure that our community leaders, that we continue to organize and mobilize all of our community members, partnerships, allocate resources, support and stimulate investments in our communities. And that's where our ARPA monies have come in at. Um, our providers and our group still know that we need to look at the big picture so that we don't get caught in the weeds, if you will, if you will and make sure that we're breaking down all of our specific steps as we move forward. Feasibility studies, um, those need to be ongoing. Our private providers will uh, do their own internal engineering studies. And then again, county municipalities, IT, GIS resources, and uh, are making sure our county engineers uh, are in the mix also as we address the easement agreement with townships. So where do we go with funding opportunities? And I think everybody has pretty much stated that straight out front. We ARPA monies, uh, Ogle County is allocated a fair amount of monies and will continue to allocate that. Um, and then being a part of uh, Connect Illinois, being a, prior, a part of this group has enhanced us immensely. Um, as well as moved us forward um, so that we will be good partners uh, in using the ARPA monies and the NTIA uh, grants if we are uh, awarded. So what did we learn? We learned that there's no good time to do this and that you must have a group that participates. Um, again, just because one area has great broadband or is okay with their broadband doesn't mean the rest of your counties are being served um, as it is a necessity. And in conclusion, um, we're committed to broadband for all. It is a necessity and we wanna seize the moment, build out the broadband infrastructure, increase your broadband increase broadband bandwidth, stimulate competition among existing providers, which will essentially benefit our community, existing services in the city, rural, county, economic development area for all. That's it, Pat. That's the last That's slide. That's it. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you for that, uh, Ogle County. And uh, uh, I like your slides. And, and uh, when you're being able to show the commitment of the uh, leaders on these uh, 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 resolutions, I think that's really great that uh, to have those uh, resolutions in place. I think that's a great strategy. And we've seen some communities do take that down to town boards, to uh, school boards, uh, chambers of commerce, and really building that list of people who are signing on uh, to that vision and strategy. So I encourage you to think about that uh, going forward as well. So, but it's great that you're really diffusing this information throughout your region. So I give you a lot of credit for that. That's not a small task. Hmm. Good, thank you uh, for that. And thank we've you. got one uh, uh, community left. It's actually, oh, Adrienne, go ahead. You know, I was just gonna say, I wanted to point out that the Accelerate Handbook, guidebook, does have sample um, resolution for you to look at. And I agree with Bill. This is the first time I've heard any of the groups mention the resolution. I thought that was really great. The second thing is, I do agree, man, the GIS department is your best friend in this process. So, so getting everybody um, 
all the counties to participate in their GIS. That's a terrific uh, other tip for people. And then you're the only one that mentioned grants from the state of Illinois Department of Transportation. So maybe at some point uh, you'll share uh, what you're thinking with some other people. Okay, Bill, thanks. Good. And then one uh, question, you know, you put up your criteria on providers mm -hmm. and those are very technical. And uh, uh, I'm not sure that this general public would really have much of an understanding of a lot of those kind of criteria or what they mean, mm -hmm. or uh, as you've interviewed providers, how they kind of came out on that. And so if you wanted to provide different information around kind of which providers you might see as your best prospective partners or what you learned from provider interviews that was more qualitative, I think that would be great. Okay, thank you. Good, thanks. Uh, welcome Peoria Woodford. See your slides are up and looking great. Thanks, Bill. Um, and and I, I would like to say I could begin this uh, presentation maybe just by saying ditto, but that's probably not acceptable at this point, right? So we've all had similar uh, journeys and each of us may be um, very unique in terms of our geography. But I think it's, it's, it's really um, important to recognize uh, what, what we've experienced as teams and the unique investment perhaps that the state of Illinois has made in all of our communities and really come together through this partnership with the Benton Institute, University of Illinois Extension and the Illinois Office of Broadband in, within the Department of Commerce and Econ Economic Opportunity has really led this effort. And we should be um, proud of the state of Illinois for this investment because I don't think this is happening everywhere. And the program really was intended to help us, you know, have these conversations that have been so um, meaningful and intentional um, around the work about broadband expansion. We, um, you all know this story very well in terms of how we were formed and the application process that we went through, but we wanted to be able to share this information with the communities that we serve and we'll be building a communication strategy that begins to tell what this journey has looked like for our team. And, and one of the, the key takeaways I think is that um, as all of us have taught us that we know that our, our planning and exploration around this issue is not complete, but we really have a, a great foothold in understanding of the lay of the land, if you will, in our two counties. Our team really um, made for a, a significant part of the richness of the dialogue and discussion around our community. And, and we are very thankful for the perspectives that each of them brought, but also the connectivity that our community leaders create for us because their position within their organizations, within their, their um, neighborhoods really helps us to understand more holistically what's happening uh, throughout our region. So we we greatly appreciate their perspectives and their service. Um, we I think we did a great job of, of um, garnering the support and, and commitment of many of the key players uh, for our communities, and that will serve us well in going forward to have that uh, shared grounding in both counties. So the, the, as many of them, have, the teams have said today that really the health pandemic brought forward um, the magnitude of the digital divide for all of us. And I think the um, key thing for our, our region is really that issue of economic and educational equity um, through the lens of broadband. And the data is still coming out, you know, the, the impacts um, economically to our small businesses, um, to our households in terms of educational impacts or losses that have occurred during the pandemic. And, and we want to build strategies that can not only help us 
uh, re rebound from those uh, the, the detriments that we've experienced, but we want to create strategies that will help compel us into the future. I think the other um, kind of key thing that, that is embedded in all of our comments and our survey data is how reliant folks are on a cell phone. In that statement that we see really frequently and, and we can think about personally is if I had to do schoolwork on a cell phone, I, I would not be very successful. Even the, the business transactions that I do attempt to do on my cell phone are extremely frustrating. And so I think as a, as a community, as a society, we have to find a better way of helping um, individuals of all walks of life become uh, connected. The, the um, maps and the other study aspects of the study that we've um, encountered really point to the importance of fiber throughout our um, entire county of both Peoria and Woodford County. Specifically in our region, and I think all of the teams probably did this, but um, our, our communities, our, our economic opportunity and the types of jobs that we have in our region really uh, dictate the importance of this issue. And for us in the greater Peoria region, we are a regional medical hub. We have one of the uh, world's leading uh, medical simulation centers in Peoria. We're about to have, uh, we broke ground this spring on a new cancer center. So the importance of um, technology to our region is very tightly coupled with the, the nature of work and business that's in, occurring in our region. Um, the, the issues around education are profound in terms of not only that K-12 education, but are we uh, building a workforce that really can help us sustain and grow our regional economy because so much of our job basis today is really being based on our digital skills. Um, all of our teams have talked about the importance of agriculture and the studies that the Benton Institute and USDA Rural Development have provided us really have highlighted with all of that technology that's crossing our fields every day, if we could bring that to bear on the ag economy, we're talking about millions of dollars in additional revenue gain that could occur in agriculture with successful uh, broadband deployment. The, uh, many of us heard from our rural residents about the importance of connectivity for safety. And so the, the list is quite large and uh, often overwhelming when we consider all of the true needs that uh, we're experiencing throughout the region. So we are really committed um, to having that high performing uh, broadband internet infrastructure and services for today, but also into the future in that, that jobs element, that essential services is embedded within that uh, vision statement that Peoria County put together. Um, for uh, Woodford, same sentiment, um, maybe a, a little bit different wording there, but I think that that whole notion of making sure that we're modernizing this infrastructure, which has been compared to rural electricity, um, gaining water, you know, public water supply throughout our, our rural communities, it's really important that we have that modern, accessible, and adaptable broadband infrastructure that, that's going to serve our evolving needs, not only in education, but healthcare and the economic needs for Woodford County, our residents, businesses, and visitors. So the need is urgent, as uh, many of the counties have said, it, and it, it's um, really reinforced through the speed tests. And, we had um, almost 60% in Woodford County fall into that classification of underserved, which is that um, state and federal guideline that's, that's really driving the grant uh, funding opportunities. And um, in Peoria County, the based on the respondents, we had about 70% that could be defined as underserved. 
I love these maps and I, you know, I really um, commend that Illinois Broadband Lab for making those, this information so accessible. We can debate the FCC maps and, you know, whether they're accurate because the internet service providers are um, providing us with this information, but you can't deny the story that this map tells. And that is that we have um, almost 4,500 underserved households in Peoria County. And I think that's really unacceptable when you think about the nature of work and um, the opportunities for growth and development. Uh, Pembroke Township, your, your comments about your unique topography, I think that's a, a really important part of our community story here too. Um, we, people love their rural areas in Peoria, Woodford and Tazewell County too have beautiful uh, scenic areas um, based on the topography and trees. And that makes it really challenging to provide that service. Similar, um, if we were to look at uh, maps throughout our region, you, you see a similar story in that our city centers have service and we have a, a variety of um, internet service providers, but we're not um, reaching out very uh, broad beyond those um, city centers and that's our challenge. In Woodford County, the maps show that we have 3,200 um, unserved households. So survey comments I, uh, are really interesting and they, they do uh, kind of in, enrich the story, the comments about you know, the desirability of living rule, um, but you're, you're working at a disadvantage. And the fact that people are trying to do uh, important work uh, remotely is, is really um, disturbing when we, we don't have a complete story of who is experiencing these problems. But from our comments, we knew that we, not only do we have engineers and architects, but we have nurses that are trying to de deliver remote monitoring services for uh, patients that are recovering from COVID. We heard from the new director of our cancer center in Peoria that um, remote uh, healthcare or monitoring will be a major part of the um, care a program for cancer patients in our region. And in our uh, footprint, we have major military installations. And I was very surprised to learn that we have military professionals working from home um, and struggling with this awful um, uh, uh, internet uh, reliability. So it's, it's a very, um, uh, there's, a great need in terms of, you know, it's, this is not for recreational purposes. It's, in, it's vital to our regional economy and um, individuals' lives. So the surveys, um, I think, uh, again, kind of reinforce what we've been saying all along is that people are, are very dissatisfied with affordability speeds and the reliability issue that we've heard repeatedly. Uh, Woodford County was a, 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 a bit lower than Peoria County in terms of the level of dissatisfaction. And I heard it said a couple of different times from Woodford County residents is that they have experienced this limited broadband service for so long, they don't know, perhaps they don't know what an accelerated um, program might offer to them. I highlighted the, the bullet about um, the survey respondents sometimes have to use their cellular data plan uh, when their primary internet connection is not working. And, and this is so problematic from um, not only the, the limited connectivity piece, but in terms of a consumer cost. And during the pandemic, we, comments that we received back, we had households that had data, data overage charges amounting to $1,000. And so you know, this is, is um, really a, a consumer problem. It, it's, they've got real work to do, but it's not something that, that um, we can allow to continue in our communities. 
The, um, I think the other piece that uh, perhaps is unseen or we don't think about uh, readily in, in today's world is the number of devices that are operating within our households. So that very limited speed is trying to service multiple devices and, and multiple functions within um, our households. We have really good um, com committee uh, team support of our survey process. And um, we reached out to all the communities in, in different, through different organizations, the schools, the Farm Bureau, um, our units of local government, a really active participation in the survey process. So we have great data um, and, and that will continue to inform our work going forward. To my point, uh, this is a, a, a screen or a, a chart that was pulled together by the Benton Institute. And I, in some ways, I think that this issue has kind of flown under the radar for our communities because we don't understand the technology, right? We don't understand what uh, a certain speeds allow us to do. We understand our frustration, but we, we don't know, you know what that additional speed would do for us in terms of, of product and service. So I feel like part of this is consumer um, education and conversation. We enjoyed the opportunity to visit with um, internet service pr providers immensely. Uh, I think every uh, company that we visited with had a little bit different view of the world and how they were um, approaching the issue. And I think that's really important for us to understand the um, complexity of this issue and the, the dynamics that are happening within our communities. One of the, the great lessons or great opportunities that I think is before us is connecting with those local providers because they genuinely uh, want to invest in the region where they're located. So continue our work going forward will be around continuing to pro provide excuse me, continuing to build those relationships with internet service providers. So one of them that um, I think this just speaks to even, you know, I was complimenting the, the maps that we provided and the great data that's available at the state level. I think a big part of what we can do at the local level is to make sure that, that we're connecting with those existing businesses and Metro Communications is a, a fabulous um, internet service provider that has significant builds uh, throughout Woodford County. And, and we didn't have that uh, data and information on our maps initially, but every conversation that we've had with um, SAC going forward has been so encouraging around how they can work with the communities in um, expanding access. <clears throat> to other small um, internet, I shouldn't say small, but local internet uh, providers, these companies in our survey, these local providers came up time and time again with accolades and people love their product and they love the service that they provided, which to me um, really points to the importance of there, there's great partnership opportunities if we can um, pursue the developments with these local partners. What we've learned, and this is from our team, I think um, you've, you've done an excellent job of, of providing us information about the, the nuts and bolts of broadband. So this process was extremely informative. I think we uh, recognized both from the, the feedback that we received from the ISPs and in the dialogue that we've had within our convenings is that there's a, a, an active role that uh, units of local government at all levels and uh, agencies can play in supporting and advocating for broadband development. And we're, we're seeing uh, that at the Community college level, certainly um, this week, uh, ICC announced uh, that they are recipients of a $14 million 
um, the EDA Workforce Development Initiative that is around uh, digital literacy. And that really speaks to the importance of this uh, work in our region that we have numerous high tech jobs and the importance of building that digital skill set is huge within our region. Um, the lack of, of access to broadband uh, impedes education, access to health services, and it really uh, hinders our ability to attract and retain critical workforce talent and impedes our economic um, development opportunities. So I think our, our um, strategy at this point is fairly uh, straightforward in terms of what our next steps need to be. Uh, counties have begun conversation around creating structure, um, advisory committees that will be a blend of uh, county board members and uh, local uh, citizens that will continue the work that has begun through this process. Uh, we want to ex uh, expand this our understanding of infrastructure needs through conversations with an, a, an additional internet service providers. We didn't get to every a local company and we're um, in serious consideration of doing feasibility studies. We heard yesterday from Mid-Century that it would really um, be helpful in our county discussions if we would get our, our uh, numbers together and really understand what the costs of the builds to these uh, underserved areas might be and start to prioritize or target a specific regions within each of the counties. I think the, um, because of, of what we've uh, learned as a team, I think we really have to um, continue this communication outreach and share what we've learned um, through the survey with units of local government and ask uh, for broad support among the townships and local government officials that will help to connect communities, local government, and these internet service providers in building strategies for expansion. We, we need their uh, support at, at every level, um, the townships, the municipalities, and uh, that'll be critical as we go forward. I mentioned just really briefly the ICC um, EDA, Economic Development Administration Award that occurred this week. I, I think within our region, it's gonna be really important that we stay connected with these efforts and uh, build strategies that are complementary and leverage one another's uh, efforts in every way. And finally, in the strategies that we um, pursue really have to um, address all the critical access issues, not only for broadband, but devices, and that we, we wanna strive through um, our outreach and programming to increase adoption of technology at, at every level in our communities and make sure that, that we are um, enabling the greatest and highest level of utilization of technology throughout the region. So we have a lot of work to do and uh, we greatly appreciate the um, mentoring and the direction that's been provided through this programming effort. Kathy, uh, Kathy, thank you so much for that. That was great. There's a lot of, uh, in your presentation and uh, all the communities a lot of wisdom that was shared today. So I hope people were listening and I appreciate people uh, hanging in, uh, even though we're over time today uh, based on these presentations. But I think that uh, uh, presentation, that discussion about the, uh, the importance of your team and building that team so that there's a strong foundation for your community broadband efforts going forward uh, and the more people you have on your team at the beginning uh, the, and uh, throughout that process as you grow your team, you know, that's really going to help you uh, do that kind of collaboration, uh, both with providers and amongst your team members. We heard a lot today about public safety networks and how they could be an important uh, foundation on which to build other uh, uh, broadband networks. And so... 
having those public safety people on your team certainly makes it easier uh, to move forward on a project like that than saying, oh, we heard you have a, a network and we want you to share it with us. So if you, again, have people on board, uh, that really helps that collaboration move through. So Kathy, thank you so much for that and, and uh, managing those two counties as entities going through this process. I appreciate your ability to do that and, and keeping those groups together. I think we heard uh, today about the uh, the need for this in community empowerment to determine what's good enough for your community now and into the future and recognizing there's going to be evolving needs for broadband moving forward and to not necessarily be satisfied with the minimum level of service for today, but to, to move forward on that. Uh, I think one of the advantages of this program, and I hope you see it as well, is as you move forward and want to use uh, consultants that because you have a strong team and educated team, you've done this work, your use of the consultants can be much smarter, more targeted, and hopefully more affordable. So you get higher value uh, because you've done all this great work. And, and I think that any consultant that doesn't recognize the quality of work that you've done is maybe a consultant you don't want to work with. So I think you should think about the, you know, as you talk with uh, consultants and say, here's what we've done, hopefully they show uh, due respect for that and incorporate that into their scope of services so it's not duplicative and so on. And the fact that you guys know what you want, I think is really important. Uh, and then as we know, this is uh, uh, some of its inspiration, but a lot of it is the work and the commitment to follow through on the work is, is uh, the most important thing going forward is don't let the ball sit, don't take time off, but keep your efforts going and uh, uh, try and build momentum uh, moving forward. The last thing I'm going to say is more specific. Uh, Ogle, I would encourage you guys to, uh, I, I see the big uh, impact that Comcast had on your sample. And so you might just say, oh, here's the speed, you know, here's the sample speeds with Comcast. And then here's the sample speeds, kind of the rest of the uh, tests. And so I think that will give you that uh, contrast that you're really looking for is those folks who have a decent service are going to have the speeds that you need. And then you can show the more dismal speeds of the other providers and say, we can't live with this. And I think that would really help on your messaging. You don't have to go collect more data, but just present it in a different <coughs> way that excludes those cable modems and emphasizes the inadequacies of some of those other technologies. I want to thank everyone for their great work on this uh, program. And uh, it's really exciting to see the, the plans, the commitment to the future. And that's exactly what we're pursuing here uh, through this program to accelerate your efforts uh, moving forward. So with that, I really want to thank you. I'm going to uh, turn it to Adrian uh, for a close and uh, uh, want to thank our partners on this. The extension agents in the communities, uh, certainly Nancy uh, uh, Odrego as our uh, key facilitator, Zoom um, uh, queen, I guess, and uh, uh, really flawless technology work here uh, throughout the, uh, the program. Adrienne? Yes, uh, thank you, Bill. You've said it all so well. Uh, we couldn't do this without our partners. Uh, Illinois Office of Broadband, Illinois Extension. Not only is Nancy here, but uh, they, they also, she also had a few of her um, uh, extension staff, including Mike Delaney with Ogle County. So we were so pleased that uh, some of uh, uh, you, there were some wider help from extension. So appreciate that. Uh, and I am, I have to say, I can't wait to look at the presentations that you'll send Bill again. I was furiously taking notes. There's so much good information here. And, you know, I am so impressed 
where you started and where you've ended up. Um, what we will try to do is have an alumni meeting, uh, maybe, um, I don't know exactly when, but I, I think we would want to gather all uh, 12 co cohorts together and, um, or I'm sorry, all 12 communities on our first two cohorts together and hear where you all are and how much progress you make on your plans going forward. Please know that we are here, Bill and myself and all of the support uh, members on the Benton team are here for any future questions you may have. You have our contact information, but again, uh, this is congratulations to everybody. What a fantastic series of presentations today. Okay, round of applause, everybody for everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the kind uh, comments in the chat. And uh, I, that's we love these team presentations because I suspect the next time you do yours, you'll say, oh, I'm I'm including that slide in my presentation that you saw uh, effective use of presentation information. And we encourage that kind of collaboration. Adrian? I do have one other thing. We will be sending out a survey for you all to grade the program. And I need this for our funder and also because the state of Illinois would like to receive this feedback. So please, please take the time to fill it out. It won't take long. Robbie will be charged with sort of uh, gathering results and um, Again, that would be so helpful to us for you all to reflect, give us both positive feedback and where you think we could improve the program since Robbie will be continuing the program in with future cohorts. Thank you. Bye-bye everyone.